things. Just be a moment. <clears throat> Hey everybody and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host Chef AJ and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Before I introduce today's guest, I want to let you know that my latest book with Glenn Mercer, Own Your Health, is now available on Audible. So if you missed purchasing it when we had the promotion with all the bonus recipes and the carrot cake video. If you send us your audible receipt to ownyourhealth at gmail.com, we can get you all those bonuses you may have missed the first time around. And speaking of this book, today's guest is going to be cooking the recipes that she actually contributed to this book. Her name is Shada Soleimani. She's from Healthy Cooking with Shado. You've got to follow her on her wonderful YouTube channel where she has amazing recipes that you won't see anywhere else because she doesn't yet have a book. And she now has a website where you can get these wonderful recipes. She was one of the seven extraordinary SOS free chefs that did the Thanksgiving Day cook along. She won't be joining us for Christmas. So instead, she's got her own hour right now to teach you a little bit about healthy cooking and healthy eating. And she should know because she lost more than I weigh. She lost an entire person, 120 pounds, and she's kept it off now. Well, it's getting close to 10 years. So I think it's going to stick. Please welcome my dear friend, Shada Soleimani. Hi, Shada. It's so nice to see you. It's really nice to see you as well. And I cannot wait to celebrate our 10 year anniversary of eating this way um, and keeping the weight off, which has been honestly the longest time that I've ever kept any weight off. So well, I think I, I think it's probably going to be permanent now because they say that 90 something like 97 or 98 percent of people that lose weight through a great deal of hardship and suffering, not the way we yes. did it, eating tons of food, which we still do, getting it usually back within two years. And you're all, we're almost at the 10 year mark. So I think we're probably safe. You think, I don't know. I'm always like, I'm always afraid of that slippery slope, you know? Right. Well, I think one of the things that, you know, and I think about this all the time, and I'm going to be actually doing a webinar for Forks Over Knives in January. And I think about what separates the people that have been successful, not because everybody's been successful at weight yeah, loss, cool. a, any diet works, but the keeping it off. And I don't know if you can tell me what you think, but what I've noticed is the people that don't keep it off usually lost it in a method that's not sustainable. Like maybe they right. went to True North and fasted it off, but they never really learned how to eat or they did like one meal a day or they did something extreme to lose the weight quickly, but then they, they don't continue it. So whatever you do, if it's not sustainable, it's not going to work long-term. And, and I agree with you. And I totally agree. And you got to keep your focus on the game too. You can't take your eyes off. And I don't think, and I think abstinence is key. And I think eating your vegetables is key. Those are two things that you're going to have to do. You can't just have a little bit of this and a little bit of that and say, Oh, it's the holidays. It's okay. I can just, you know, have a little bit that little bit could send you down that, that, that rabbit hole, which is not good. That's right. And if you're a food addict, it's like one drink, one drunk, one cookie, the whole sleeve, then the whole box, and then a whole week of just eating cookies. But you really understand abstinence. And what's so nice about your story is that your, your mom was, what, what's the word? Like a, like an innocent bystander, if you will. <laughs> she, she really, you know, I mean, she had, she had some diseases as well, lifestyle diseases and a lot of sure. excess weight. And just, it just proves how the environment is critical because you know, she was, she didn't really sign up for this. I mean, she's happy, I'm sure with the results, but just Absolutely. the act of living with you and having a clean environment, eating the food, miracles occurred. And miracles did occur and she got off of all her medications and she's feeling the best that she's ever felt. And I think it's wonderful. She doesn't look her age. And, uh, you know, I look at her friends and her friends have taken, uh, they are on a lot of medications. And then you look at her, knock on wood, thank God. Uh, she's good. She's good to go. Um, and I think that's wonderful. Yeah. I think it's beautiful. And you, you know, and right now is a pandemic, but even before you were a traveling maniac, you'd go everywhere to every conference, all different countries, and you still managed to find compliant food or take food with you, even if it meant cooking in your hotel room in Vegas. So, I mean, it yeah. can be done, you know? It absolutely can be done and we need to do it. And I think, uh, you know, during our lifetime, it's easier. I look, I think of people that are way, way before us that did not have, you know, access to a lot of the stuff that we have access to right now. And it all just talks about prepping. You just got to prepare because if you don't prepare, you're going to fail. So you just got to do it. 
Right, like a Boy Scout, always prepared. Preparation trumps motivation. If all you Absolutely. have is healthy food, you'll eat it. Well, we are two peas. Of, you're preaching to the choir, hon. But I know <laughs> you're going to show us. You, you contributed a lot of recipes to my book, and thank you so much. And I know you're going to make a couple of them that are uh, your. Oh, that's so pretty. The point said, I just noticed it. But yeah, I love I love the recipes that you make, and I love your YouTube channel. And I'll, I'll make sure that the links of the show notes are there thank so people you. can watch them because people are already saying they love your oatmeal cookies, and you can tell it's a shader recipe because it everything will have pomegranate seeds on it. I can't help it. I love pomegranates and it's the best season of the year right now. And pomegranates go into everything. In fact, I should put some pomegranates in these recipes, but you know, maybe next time. So what recipes will you prepare for us today? So thank you so much for uh, having me in your book. This is a great book. So if you don't have it yet, I highly recommend there's great uh, recipes from a lot of great chefs in here. And what I am going to make today is a delicious garbanzo bean salad, which you'll find on page 237 if you're following us along. And the other one is a, is a name that AJ came up with and I, and I love the name, zucchini beanie fit into your bikini noodle. <laughs> Love, love the title of that recipe, AJ. So thank you for that. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's so funny, Shader, because, you know, I don't eat pasta because it's, it's basically flour. And I just interviewed Dr. Right. Joan Ifland, who is a food addiction specialist who wrote Sugar and Flour, How They Make Us Crazy, Sick and Fat. And she's the, she's the first person where I learned that flour is basically sugar or maybe just as bad. But yesterday was Charles's birthday, so he wanted pasta. So I made it for him. And, and like I looked at it, you know, my zucchini noodles, which were like vibrant. And, and then I looked at like the, the pasta, which is like, it was like glue. And it was like, why would you want to eat that when you could have have zucchini noodles which are amazing they are they really are amazing and you know what i've served it to guests and and at first they think oh my god we're having pasta and then they when they look at it closer they see that it's the zucchini or the squash and they absolutely love it i think it's great i use it all the time have you ever tried those hearts of palm noodles they have now they make them in all the different shapes lasagna spaghetti so that's another alternative for people i i haven't um but uh but yeah, no, this is so easy to make. Why, why start something new? Right. Yeah. Because zucchini is available all year round, pretty much for most My people. mom loves pasta. And I mean, sometimes she really wants it and I'll make it for her. But I'm, I've never been a pasta fan. So for me, it's, it was that's pretty easy to like stuff. But, you know. Yep. Oh, Great. Man. Robin says, can you do on sh a show on how to make zucchini noodles? This is the show because you're going to show us. I'm going to, well, I, I already did it. I already spiralized it, but since you want to see it, um, when I get to that recipe, sure, I'll show you how to do it and how it works. Not a problem. So yeah, not a problem. We can do it. Thank you. Sure. So you want to start with the first recipe or? Okay. So we're going to start with the uh, garbanzo bean salad. And the reason I like this salad is because I always want something that's quick, easy, and, um, and colorful. A lot of comments I get from my viewers is that my food is always really colorful. And that's because we eat with our eyes. And if the food doesn't look appetizing, we're not going to eat it. So you got to make it colorful. you got to make it fun. And you got to make it easy. So for this recipe, I've already gone ahead and chopped up the purple cabbage. Now, that's not to say that if you don't have purple cabbage, you have green. Use green. They are interchangeable. It's just that I'm going for that color factor and I want a lot of bright colors in here. Um, then we're going to add shredded carrots to this. So the purple against the orange is a great color combination. Now, am I gonna stand there and shred the carrots all by hand? If I have time, yes, I will do that. Did I have time? No, because I was working all day yesterday. So Trader Joe's came to the rescue and I used their shredded carrots and there's nothing wrong with, with doing that. Right, AJ? I think, I don't think there is. Do, I mean, I do it. I, I, I like it. And yeah, it's I do here. too. Yeah, and I, I love pur I love the purple cabbage and the orange carrots. That's uh, my chopped salad every day has both. Right. Of them. I mean, look at the colors already that are starting to build here. Next, we're going to add cucumbers to this. Now, I use a lot of Persian cucumbers because they are absolutely delicious. I don't like those big fat cucumbers. I don't even know what they're called. They're waxy and they're just not flavorful. But the English cucumber, if you can't find um, Persian cucumbers, I would go for the English cucumber. That would, that would work really well in this recipe. So because we always have Persian cucumbers in this house, that's what went into here. And believe it or not, um, 
growing up, and even to this day, we buy Persian cucumbers by the caseful, literally, because I could easily eat 10 to 12 of these a day, maybe. They're filling, they're water, there's extremely low in calorie, and it's a great, um, it's a great thing to snack on. You know, if you want to, if, if you're a snacker and you really want to snack on something, go snack on cucumbers. There's nothing to them. So that's what I would recommend. Um, the next thing we're going to add in here is Roma tomatoes. Get some of the color red in here. Then we're going to add a yellow bell pepper that has been cubed and chopped up. We are going to add mango. Um, if you don't like mango, can you substitute another fruit? Well, of course you can. You can add whatever fruit you want. Um, you could add blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, um, pineapple. Pineapple is absolutely delicious um, in this recipe. So don't feel like just because the recipe states something, feel free to change it up and make it your own and use, you know, use the stuff that you like. The other thing we're going to add to this is a chopped up red onion. Now, if you want to use sweet onion, you certainly can do that. And if you, um, and of course, we're going to need our garbanzo beans. Now, garbanzo beans, you know, you can use canned garbanzo beans, and that's what I did for this one for today. But I made a video on healthy cooking with Shada where I teach you how to make um, your own garbanzo beans from scratch. In the instant pot, that are, that's super easy to make. Something else that we're going to add to this is shredded zucchini, and I love this handheld mandala. AJ, if you remember, we got this um, when we yeah. were at North. Yeah, we got it at Sur La Taba. It was about thirty dollars, and I still exactly. have it and use it. It's a good one. Just make sure you use a guard, guys, because you don't want to cut the tip of your thumb off. No, you don't. And I and I've done that. And uh, with the zucchini, make sure you're holding it like there's a stem up here. Make sure you use that. And I remember we got one for um, we got one for Mauricio. I hope he uses it. But they don't. They're they're so they won't. They refuse to use a glove or a guard at True North. I know, and I don't understand why. But and you've seen how fast they work too um, when they're using this equipment too. So maybe Mauricio uses it at home. Who knows? I don't know. This is a great product. It's on my Amazon page. You can find a link to that um, in my Amazon store. A lot of the products that I use, you know, I make sure to put it in there because you're always asking me, where do I get it? Where do I get it? Well, I try to make it easy for you guys and put it on the Amazon page. And at least you can go and take a look at it and decide if you want to use it or not, not to use it. So now... We're going to toss all this together. And uh, now, AJ, I know that you cannot have beans and um, the legumes in here, but you certainly can add squash in here. You can add potatoes in here. So you could do all that, and the flavors will still be absolutely delicious. Color's amazing. Look at the colors. Now, who would not want to eat that? You know, we're also going to add. I shredded some fresh mint, which mint always makes the salad taste really yeah, good. Mint is good on everything. Right? Now, the dressing for this, you, I, okay, so for this, I personally like just lemon or lime juice. Nothing fancy, nothing too crazy. Or what you could do is add white wine vinegar or white balsamic vinegar because I don't want to add the darker vinegar to this because it's going to change the colors in here. So those are the two things I do. But sometimes, because I love California balsamics vinegar, um, sweet heat, because I like the sweet heat against the mango. It's, it's, it's a really, it's a nice combination between the heat and the sweet. So I, I will pour some of this on top of it, um, but it, it will change the color dynamic a little bit. So it just depends on what you want. And if you don't want to use the California balsamics, which I don't see why not, because their products are amazing. Um, the regular balsamic from Napa Valley, the naturals, that's another great balsamic to use. And you can mix the lemon juice and the balsamic vinegar and toss it all together. And that's how this salad comes, you know, I don't dress it until I'm ready to eat it just because I don't want things to get soggy. And this makes a pretty large portion. So 
This is going to be, you know, eaten over the next three or four days. Half of it will go to my aunt's house and half of it will be here. So it'll be good. It'll be nice and tasty. Yeah, I or you, I bet you could just not dress some of it if you were worried that it would go, you know, get too soft in the fridge. You could just take some outside, put it in a good Tupperware or glass jar and then dress it oh, as you're going to eat it. Absolutely. And we and we will do that. I mean, my mom and I will take a portion of it for today's lunch and we'll I'll dress that. Um, and then the rest of it will go in the Tupperware and we'll have it for tomorrow and then we'll dress it as we go. Because I don't know about you, but I don't like soggy, mushy things. So... That's that. That's that recipe. Me and neither. That's why I never liked oatmeal. I don't like things that are, I don't know, softish. I, I don't like oatmeal either, but what I do like recently is oat groat. Oh, yeah. Well, that's because they're toothsome like rice. They're delicious. Exactly. So I will eat the oat groat over eating rice right now. So it's really delicious. Any questions on this recipe? You know, I, I got this thing called the Nutra Milk Machine, and you can actually make milk out of oat groats. I had no idea. It's amazing. Oh, yeah, it's so cool. And do you ever eat millet, Shada? I love millet. I do sometimes. I do. Yeah, I've, I've got a few recipes with millet in there, which is kind of nice. And that's the other thing. You could add millet to this salad. You could add rice to this salad. You could add, I mean, the possibilities literally is endless with this salad. Yeah, a little quinoa, maybe any kind of grain would be delicious. Any kind of grain would be delicious, and you could make wraps out of it. You know, like the you could get the collard greens and make a nice, you know, put everything in the collard green and make a nice wrap out of it. It's it's delicious. So I, honestly, some of these recipes, the possibilities are endless of what you can you know can do with them. Yeah. Do you have any uh, videos on your YouTube channel where you show how you make wraps because you do them so you perfectly? Know what? I, I, I did, but I don't like the way that video came out. So we are, we, we're going to reshoot the video on the wraps and on the sushis so that people could see step-by-step uh, step how I make them. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're, gonna, we're in the process of redoing those. I, I remember the funnest, one of the funnest things we did together because at the, I took a year from when I left LA to, to when I knew I was leaving. And so after being there almost my entire life, I wanted to do everything that I never did, like go to the the science museum and go to, we went to pageant of the masters. Oh my God, brought, remember? Brought the wraps that you saved the day. That was a fun night. That was a really, and for those of you that don't know the Laguna Beach uh, Arts Festival, they have the pageant of the masters every year, but due to COVID this year, obviously they didn't have it. But um, Adrian, we should go see it again. That is a once. In, I mean, that's something. That, it's like Disneyland. You, I mean, a lot of people go to Disneyland often, but you, you can't. You can't live your life without at least one seeing pageant of the masters. Right, and every year is a different theme. So you literally could go every year to see it, and it is a different mm -hmm. theme. So it's not like you're going to be repeating. Uh, what you're saying so which is kind of nice so I mean I had my binoculars on them and it's like they don't move they don't breathe it's incredible no remember and all the make and then you couldn't tell whether whether it was like a picture in the background or it's a real person like you couldn't tell it was the most fascinating thing I think I've ever done uh no nah, we had a, we had a great time that night that was that was a lot of fun so Okay, so yes, let me you get... Shana, I'm all alone here in the desert. Come play with me. <laughs> I, I want to. It's this whole COVID situation. <sighs> it's this whole COVID. All right, let's set up for the next one. And since you want to see how the zucchini is made, let me move some of this around. So I'm going to go to the refrigerator to grab the zucchini. I'll be right back. Okay. How are you guys doing, by the way? If any of you have Disney Plus, you've got to see the movie Godmothered. It is the most delightful movie, especially for the holidays. And, you know, with so much negativity going on, you just have to watch it. And if you have kids, especially, it is just the most precious movie. And I'm still smiling ear to ear. I saw it last night. It's, it's just worth it just to sign up for the month to see that movie. It's called what Godmothered. It's called Godmothered, and it's with Jillian Bell, who is the wonderful actress that was in this other wonderful movie called Britney Runs a Marathon, and it's got Isla Fisher, and it's it's just beautiful and delightful. Disney really knows how to tell a fairy tale, but I I, um, I, I just can't believe that Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 67. I give it like 107. It was beautiful. I do you, I don't, and I don't know if you'll agree with me on this, but sometimes the movies that Rotten Tomatoes says is no good, I actually like. 
Yeah. I remember once they gave something a four and I'm like, this is the best movie ever. And then once they gave something a hundred and I'm like, this is terrible. So, but I just, I just don't like it yeah. because I don't want it to make people not watch it because this was just such a, it's a beautiful movie. Where is sweet Bailey? Tiffany, I'll see if I can get her in here before we end the broadcast. She needs to come and say hello to her auntie. Hello. It's been a long time. I know. All right, so the, the, the zucchini noodle machine that I have, you can go to my Amazon page and see it. It's by Bella. This is what it looks like. And you all you do, it's really nice because I used to have that spiruli, and I know, AJ, you had one too. And that spiruli, is a, it was a hand-cranked machine where this is automatic. And that one actually broke. So I got this one. And you, all you do is you plug it in. You're gonna take your zucchini and cut off on each end. And you put it in. Then you put this side in. Then you're gonna lock it. This is it's got a locking mechanism, which is really, really nice. And then you just turn the button on. And it starts doing its thing automatically. It's perfect. It's so easy to do. How easy is that? That's a cool one. I didn't know you had that one. The only one I don't recommend is that really that $8 one called the Vegetti. When we used to use that at Rancho La Puerta for cooking classes, people always cut themselves. This is by Bella. And look, you get your noodles. And I think it's fun for the kids, right? And it looks like pasta. What I end up doing is I, I give it a, um, I give it a chop in the middle just to make it easier to eat. Um, but it's it's super easy. This machine is uh, is about thirty dollars, but I tell you what, it's well worth the, the thirty bucks. So, any questions on the zucchini machine? Um, so far not, unless I missed them. Yeah, there um, there's a lot of different brands out there, and to me, this Bella has worked out really nicely. So I will do. Uh, the yellow the yellow squash I will do the zucchini you can do apples it'll do different different thicknesses there's like four settings on this machine so I will do really like pasta angel fine hair it'll do a little bit thicker and what I did for today's recipe I did some that were thicker and thinner so because I like the the texture of mixing the two textures together and you could take this and add it to that salad that we just made or you can make a nice pesto sauce and um, and just pour it on top of here and on the pasta and have it cold. I've made um, I did a video not too long ago where I did a mango uh, mango sauce on top of um, the spiralized zucchini, which is absolutely delicious. So you could you know do that. But what I'm doing right now is I'm getting the pan uh, warmed up for our next uh, recipe. The Zucchini, bikini, whatever you, AJ, you call this. <laughs> it's a zucchini, beanie, fit into your, wait, zucchini, beanie, fit, fit into, into your, your bikini. Okay, zucchini, beanie, fit into your bikini noodles. Sorry, that's what, a lot. I still fit into my bikini. Yeah, you look great in that one picture, especially the before and after. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's this way of eating and it's really putting your, you know, uh, keeping a uh, laser beam focused, which I've always talked about and uh, just doing the work. It's not, it's not easy. There's a lot of temptations out there. And in fact, I, you know, we just uh, made a video cause we're coming out with uh, like a holiday Valentine's day dessert uh, webinar. And it was kind of, you know, as soon as I made everything, a lot of it, um, I gave it away and I gave it to people to take home because I just did not want that stuff in the house. Um, it's just, it's, it's, and that was the best thing I could have done. Make it and then give it away. And they were all thrilled about it. So I remember that time you told your friend not to bring anything and she brought a chocolate cake and you said, if you don't take it home, I'm throwing it out. She didn't believe you. And I threw it in the trash right in front of her face. That's the way it is. The way it is. I, you know, I, 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 I will not allow my weight to creep back up. 
I, I just will not. I, 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 I love the way I feel. I love the fact that I can go into a store and, and buy, you know, cute clothes. And it's not, it's not about being vain or, or vanity or anything. It's just, I don't want to ever go back on medication again. And I, and I really don't. So I will do whatever it takes to, to, uh, to stay that way. Could you show the, the viewers in case they don't know your story let, yet, the, a photo me, of, of what you looked like when I first met you on, in uh, 2011? Yeah, but I am going to get the onions in here because I want them to start to caramelize for the next recipe. That's going to take a little while, but sure, I'll be happy to. Is that a new backsplash? I don't recognize it. Did you get, did you get a new backsplash? AJ June, we remodeled the kitchen like three, four years ago. Oh, it just looks different on me. Okay, so AJ wanted me to show you guys. So when AJ met me, that's how she met me. With a martini in her hand. Now she went from martini to bikini. Exactly. So that was... Um, God, you know what's funny? It's like, I don't even know who this person is. I really, I, I don't... All I know is that this person was not healthy and she was really, 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 really sad, really sad. And then um, this is another picture of before. And you know what the funny part is? And I don't know if you ever did this, but like I'm holding my stomach in on all those pictures because I think it's going to be like flatter and nicer. You know what I mean? We all we all do stuff like that, and then um, here's a before and after. Oh, that's a great one! I love your hair in that one too. That's that. when my hair was shorter. Remember, I went and I cut off all my hair. It looks great, actually, though. Thank you. But if you go to my website, um, I talk about my story, and I've got a lot of before and after pictures on my website. Um, and that website is also called Healthy Cooking with Shana. And you'll know it's my website because there's pomegranates everywhere. <laughs> and you lost that weight eating things like potatoes and sweet potatoes and rice and beans. You actually ate carbs and you eat carbs now. And people are still, you know, I don't know if you saw the two-part series with Dr. McGoogle these last two weeks, but he gave this lecture on the, on the potato, a new talk. And then people were like, oh, I can't eat carbs. I mean, it's like crazy that people think that. Still, it is, it is, and they, they don't understand the difference between complex carb and refined carbs. Then they generalize everything and put it all under carbs that carbs are bad for us. And I still I get that question all the time like, oh my god, you eat carbs? I'm like, okay, I lost my weight eating carbs, so I don't know, I you know, I don't know what kind of carbs you guys are eating, but it drives me crazy. Carbs, my, yeah, it is. Yeah, but sure. they're not afraid to eat nuts, you know, go figure. It's like, oh, nuts must be good. So let's eat. That's so funny. But anyway, so let's read some of the nice comments. We have uh, infinite love and gratitude. What could be better than Shada on this winter solstice? Robin says, so excited to see Shada again. Oh, hi, she's Robin. A, she's an inspiration. Sherry says, proud of her, having kept it off. Lots of nice comments. Jody says, I love her and her sumptuous recipes. Uh, you're amazing. Thank you. Cookies are amazing. So let's see. I really, I, I, I can't thank uh, the audiences enough for those beautiful messages that you guys email me, private messages, text and all that. It really warms my heart, especially when I, you know, you guys said, like I had one lady and I, I apologize for not remembering her name. She uh, put a message out on YouTube about the latkes. And she said that those latkes reminded her of how when her mom used to make latkes, it was similar to what I made. And it just, you know, that brought tears to my eyes because what a nice memory to, you know, all of a sudden you're making these latkes and it brings back memories of your mom making them and enjoying them. So that's, that was really cool. Really nice. But Gina says, would I like zucchini noodles if I'm not crazy about zucchini? I, I find that pasta is all about the sauce. The noodle is just exactly. the carrier. Exactly. I, I totally agree with you. It's the sauce. If you, if you make a good enough sauce, whether it's a marinara sauce, a pesto sauce, even uh, just taking fruits and stuff and mixing that and pouring that on top, it's, you can change the flavor. Absolutely. 
So what I'm doing right now for this next one is I'm caramelizing the onions and it's about a, on a medium heat and I have not added any water to it. It's, I'm dry sauteing it. If it starts to stick a little bit, I may add a little bit of water to it. Um, so definitely no need for oil of any kind. We don't use oil at all. And it's funny, people come to my house and they're like, where's the oil? Well, there is no oil. And you, you know, I make a lot of Persian food. And when Persians come over, they, they have to be in the kitchen when I'm, when I'm taking the rice out because they don't believe me that I've made the tadig with no oil. So they will all come in here and you've been in my kitchen. My kitchen is not that big. So we'll have everybody in here. I'll take the rice out and then I'm taking the tadig out. And I've had people literally like with a napkin or something go to the bottom to see if there's any oil to see. And I'm like, there is no oil. And they cannot believe that there's no oil. It's crunchy and it tastes just as good, if not better than the original. The original, when you bite into it, you get all this oil in your mouth. Now, the original is a lot thicker and it's a lot crunchier, but heck, I'd rather have it thinner, just as crunchy and not the fat and not the oil in there. So, all right, so this is caramelizing really, really nicely. So to this, we are going to add we're going to add the mushrooms, the bell peppers, the sun-dried tomatoes, and the carrots. Now, sun-dried tomatoes, you want to make sure that you're getting them that are not oil-packed. This has this is from Sprouts and the sun-dried tomatoes, and there's nothing in here but sun-dried tomatoes, and that's it. No oil, no nothing, but that's what we want in there. We're going to add our carrots to this. Then we are going to add mushrooms. The mushrooms are going to release some water. So this is why I don't want to add any water to this dish. And we are going to add the sun-dried tomatoes. And we are going to add the bell peppers. Now, Pam wants to know how do you store your cucumbers? She never gets hers to keep for very long. And Monarch asked if you could also hold up a, the, the Persian cucumber again. I like the Persian ones because they don't have the seeds or if they do, they're so small, you don't notice it. The, the Persian cucumbers really don't have a lot of seeds. They're very, it's very minor. And the way that we keep it, um, uh, we go ahead and, and wash it really well and then um, we'll, we'll let it dry and then We'll peel it and then I'll put it in a good uh, Tupperware box and then in between, like we'll put you know all of them on the bottom and then we'll take parchment paper and put that on top of it and then we'll put the cucumbers on top of the parchment paper, then another layer of parchment paper and then more cucumbers and then we'll so forth and so on until we get to the top and then we put and then we put a final parchment paper on top and then we keep it in the refrigerator. But you got to remember, as, as quickly as we're eating it, we're not keeping the cucumbers all that long. We, the cucumbers may last maybe four or five days, and that's it. Because the rest is in my tummy or my mom's tummy. So do, you <laughs> wanna see, do they want to see a Persian cucumber? Yes. Yeah, I can get it from the Because you're a Persian, so it would make sense. It would totally make sense. Uh, JL, if you can't find oat groats in stores, you can you know, the bulk section is different now because of the pandemic, they're bagging everything, but you can check my Amazon store or just check Amazon there. You can get old goods there. Yeah, you, there, there are definitely on, on, on our Amazon pages and um, Amazon does have them, but the stores don't have them anymore. Right. Yeah, I think those Tupperware things store, keep things really well. And Robin says, have you ever used the California balsamic pomegranate vinegar? I do. I have. I actually put that on, on, on salads and I put that on uh, banana and ice creams. So, yeah. But I take the whole pomegranates right now and toss all that into the salad. And here's a cucumber. This is a Persian cucumber. It's small. Um, even if you break it in, let's see, we can cut it in half. And if you, I don't, I don't know if you can see, but the seeds are really, really tiny. And they have such a beautiful aroma and they taste so much better than all the other cucumbers. 
Mary says, what is a place in LA that is good to visit? I don't know. I don't like LA. <laughs> well, as as, but, but as far as doing what? What is it that they want to do? Yeah, because Pageant of the Masters isn't in LA. It's in Laguna Beach. So it's kind of far from LA. So exactly. uh, uh, what do I, what did uh, I, I think if I had to visit something in LA, it would be the Groundling Theater on Thursday night for the all improv show. That was my favorite thing in LA when I lived there. I and mean, I like the oh, farmer's see. market on third and Fairfax. It's next to CBS. It's not a farmer's market like that. It's once a week. It's like the, the, the original, the very first farmer's market. That's pretty fun. Those were my two favorite things. So as this is softening up, we're going to add the garlic. Now, I know you have this because you got me hooked on this, on this little Tupperware gadget of the chopper. And it's the best thing because it doesn't waste anything. And you can just put your whole garlic in here. And then all you do is pull the string. Oh my God, I love this gadget. I have this size and I have the larger size. And it's so cool. And we get all of our chopped onions or garlic. And we're gonna put it in here. Oh, here's a nice question from Gina. I don't know the answer. So does Shada still do a fruit and veggie day every week. What do you think? Well, I'm guessing it's Shada. Yes. She's a Virgo. So she's- Yes, I, Shada still does it. Some habits are hard to break. And JP, John Pierre, for those of you that don't know him, he um, he instilled that in me. And yeah, I still do it. Sometimes- Linda, Linda Middlesworth says, I love you beautiful Shada, or Shada oh, Jupiter, I'd like to call her. Thank you. I love her too. Um, no, the, the fruit and vegetable day, yes, I do it. And sometimes um, sometimes I will go longer. Sometimes I will do a week. Like last year before going to True North uh, to do my 10-day water fast, I did a whole uh, 12 days, two weeks actually of just fruits and vegetables in order to prep uh, for going. So that was, you know, so yeah, if you can do it, why not? It's, it's really good. So this is starting to be done. The next thing we're gonna to add to this is a can of diced Roma tomatoes. You wanna to get the salt-free one. If you can find the fire roasted salt-free, make sure to use that one. So we're gonna I, just, I just ended up buying a case of them. It was easier because the stores just, I, they, they rarely had them. And when they had them, they were always sold out because they're so popular, you know? I agree. I, agree. I, I love the fire roast one. Here's a question from Candace. Do you guys have a tip for wanting to snack at night? Such a hard habit to cut for me, just wanting dessert and popcorn or salty and crunchy. Well, one thing I'm gonna do in the show notes or not in the show notes, but in the chat right now, Candace, is post a video I did with Dr. Lyle on YouTube about cramming. And that could be very helpful, but don't have it in your house. Cause if you don't have the popcorn in your house, you can't eat it at night. What would you say to snacking at night, Shada? Well, okay, I just wanna let you know, I did add the black beans to this. Um, so. First of all, as soon as I'm done, I, I don't, I don't, I say no to snacking at night. That's what I say. But I think something that has helped me for um, stopping the snacking at night is as soon as I'm done eating dinner, I go upstairs and I floss and I brush and I do everything because I don't want to floss and brush all over again. So that has helped me to divert myself from doing that. If you really, 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 really want to eat something at night, Again, cucumbers, I find, are low calorie, mostly water. Have a cucumber. Have vegetables. Have your, your refrigerator stocked with a lot of chopped up vegetables um, ready to go. And honestly, don't bring the popcorn in your house. Don't bring the bread into your house. Don't bring any of that stuff into your house. So if you, can, if you really have to have something, like if I really, really wanted to have something, uh, there's cucumbers always in the house in the refrigerator and that's what I would go to. So you know what Chef AJ says, if you're not hungry enough to eat vegetables, you're not hungry. There you go. Hey, Shada, Colleen says, after losing that much weight, it looks like her skin isn't loose. Well, the, the shirt is, is, is holding on to the a lot of the loose skin. So the, yeah, my, I mean, my arms, my arms are loose. My stomach, no, there's, there's some loose spots on my stomach. It's just that everything's kind of tight. But remember, I've never had children and I've always, always, always exercised all my life. So even, at, even when I was at my heaviest weight, I still exercised. In fact, 
I even told you the story about how I got into cycling and I got off because I was crying because I, I couldn't do it. But then you took me back again. And you said, no, you got to do this. And so I say, keep up with your exercise, keep up with everything that you're doing. And um, all of our skin are just different naturally. So some people are, but you know, and if you really don't like your sagging skin, then there's always, you know, if, if you want, there's the surgery for it, but it's completely up to you. So this is almost ready. We are going to add, we're going to add kale to this and we are going to add the zucchini noodles to this. Too bad you're not here, AJ, for lunch today. Mm, it looks great. Well, if, if you were coming, I would not have put the beans in there. I would have put, you know, either some kind of grain or potatoes or something else in there for you. So Judy's saying, what's wrong with popcorn? I thought it was allowed in a starch solution. It's not that there's anything wrong with it, but it's not a weight loss food. It's 1800 yeah, it's calories per pound. Whole corn is 500 calories a pound and has water, fiber, vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, antioxidants, micronutrients. It's a dry snack. It's got the caloric density of crackers. It's 1800 calories per pound. Also, it's a hand to mouth food, which I don't recommend. So if you're going to eat popcorn, you eat it like JP says with chopsticks, but it's not a weight loss food. That's but it's for amazing sure. how it's ingrained into our brain that popcorn is actually okay. And it's not. Old Hammer says it's okay if you want to gain weight, but it's not for weight loss popcorn. But you know as well as I do, like Weight Watchers, all those other diet programs, they always said, oh, have a little bit of popcorn or blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that's because um, they, they're, doing, they're doing calorie por portion control or calorie restriction, which you're going to learn in the next year the truth about weight loss summit from Dr. Rosanna Alviero, why it always ends up failing. She brilliant. And she, this is something she studied. Monarch says, are Persian cucumbers different from small pickling cucumbers? Yes, because those have been pickled and those have been, those have been, um, those have had the salt, the vinegar, all sorts of other things added to the pickled cucumbers. So those are a little bit different. Yeah. But they might've made them from the Persian cucumbers because those are relatively small. If you, the, the best place to go and get Persian cucumbers, honestly, Trader Joe's is overpriced because for just a, like five or six of them, they charge you an arm and a leg. If you can find a Middle Eastern market close to you, um, those are the best places to go get them because you can literally get them by, like we do, by the case. They're, they're a heck of a lot cheaper. And when you're picking um, Persian cucumbers, make sure that they're not super soft. You, when you, you want to test them, you, there, there's got to be some firmness to the cucumber because if they're mushy and soft, they're not good. And you want them kind of long and thin and, and not, not too, not, I mean, this is getting out of hand, but you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, Elisa says, can Shada talk about how she got her family on her side? My most difficult issue is people I live with refuse to have a clean environment. They laugh at the request. Well, then they don't respect you. And then you need a session with Dr. Doug Lyle because he helps people negotiate clean environments. It can be done. So I, the problem isn't the environment, it's the relationship and why you allow them to treat you that way. So Dr. Doug Lyle is the king for this kind of situation. And I, and I agree with that. If, um, you know, when, when I moved back at the house, that was one of the things that mom and I talked about, but. God bless her. She has always, since I was a kid, she has always, always supported me in anything and everything that I have done. And when I mentioned this to her, she, there was no qualms about it. There was nothing. She's like, what is it that I can do to help you? What can we do to all help you? We'll all do it. So I've never come up any of the, you know, I, I hear from people that their family members um, just do not want to be involved and they don't want to do it. And I think it comes down to respect because if you really love someone and you really respect them, you're going to do anything and everything to help them to succeed in what they're wanting to do. So that's where that goes. And, and I think what you need to do is just to sit down with your family and have a heart to heart talk and really try to explain to them how this, you know, what you're wanting to do and have their support and that you need their support and you need them to help you in order to succeed. 
because you want to be around for as long as possible and you want to be able to have fun, to travel, to go out, to be, you know, be with your grandchildren, your children and everything. So they need to, they need to understand that they need to. And if you, and if you still can't get through to them, then Doug Lyle or JP or any one of those people, that would be the best place to go. And so that they can intervene, even they can come and talk to you. You know, yeah. you can talk to the family and well, try to explain. Absolutely. I've done that. Colleen says I've had to talk about the clean environment with and he says, I'm not respecting him. Well, if you listen to the talk stuff that Dr. Lyle talks about, he says, you always default to the person with the need. So in other words, if you have a handicapped child in the house or a child that uses a wheelchair and you have other children that can that are ambulatory, you put a wheelchair ramp in the front of the house. You don't say to the one in the wheelchair, well, everybody else can walk. So you should be able to just, you don't need a ramp. You always defer to the person that has the need. That's what Dr. Lyle says. So I disagree with him that, that you are not respecting him. He is not clearly not respecting you. Yeah, I agree. I think it, it really does boil down to respect because if you really love someone and you respect them and you you will do anything and everything for them. Absolutely. A loving family member will always support someone in recovery. The only reason they wouldn't, well, there's a couple of reasons, but one is they're addicts themselves. And so the thought of having a clean environment is just beyond their comprehension. And I agree. I agree. Well, I, I hope that she finds, um, she, she finds the support that she needs. And just remember... You know, we're all your family too. So come to us, let us help you if there's anything that we can do. And, and I think, you know, make the yummiest foods for them. I really, I will not budge on what I serve in this house. And I did that from day one. And that's why you've been so successful. So JL says, I live with my daughter and her husband. They don't follow my diet, but they respect how I eat. They keep their non-compliant snacks, food separate and out of sight. So that's another that's another option. If they can't have a 100% clean, that's brilliant what, what she's doing. So yep. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But don't give in. Don't give in to anything. And I think that's what made me successful is because I did not budge. So whoever walks in through that front door, if I'm having any kind of party, Guess what they're eating? They're going to eat my food my way, or they can go hit the highway. Yeah. Well, you're, you're, you, you've been unwavering, and so have I. And people think we're so extraordinary, but we're not. We just live in a clean environment, and we have great food preparation. I mean, yes. that's that's the secret. Clean, if, if all you have in your house is healthy food, eventually you're going to eat it. Who would I just interview for the summit? Was it yeah, Dr. Greger? And he said, he, he talked about the importance of a clean environment. He goes, because then if you're hungry, guess what? You're going to eat an apple. You're going to eat a sweet potato. It's always yeah, gonna be, that rich food's always gonna bang on your brain if it's in the house. You're designed and then, to eat them. And then you and then you worry about Chef AJ coming to your house and going through all your stuff because you know she'll find anything and everything. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm the food police only for people that are friends and clients, though. Not to, well, who, I haven't been anybody else's anybody's house since the pandemic, so you're safe right now. And uh, really, your drawers. Anyway, so I'm going to show you what this came out like. This, oh my God, this is so. And you don't need a lot of spices or anything for this. I mean, you could add some smoked paprika to this. You can add some more garlic powder to this. But I love the simplicity of this dish because the flavors just all come together. Um, and you could, you've uh, also done cooking demos at the Fasting Escape, haven't you? Yes, I have. Yes. That must be fun. It is fun, and it's really kind of fun to see, you know, them go through their recovery, and and uh, it is. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, Nate's going to be on the show Thursday. His uh, this I've had only one guest on um, Healthy Living with uh, Chef AJ Live that has passed away this year, so it's going to be a tribute to that guest with Nate. Oh, for his grant, yeah, that was sad. Yep. So this is our pasta dish. Oh, sorry about the steam. But, but look how beautiful and colorful that is. That looks amazing. I just want to eat that right now. I love zoodles, especially when you cook them like that. It is. It's really nice. But I would not serve this to you because of the beans. I would take the beans out and put either some oak road in there or some rice in there. Or, or even, even without it, just the way that you can once you caramelize an onion, I think that's really the secret. If people don't like, like, like Gina was saying, well, well, I like zucchini. I don't noodles. If I don't like zucchini, you start with a caramelized onion and zucchini, everything tastes delicious. If you're using a caramelized onion as the base. Yep, I, I totally agree. But people don't have enough patience to stand and to watch it to caramelize. And it, it does take a little while, but once it starts, it's really, it's, or you can actually even caramelize in your um, Instant Pot if you don't want to do it on the stove top. 
using the saute function. So. Oh. so Dina says, what recipes does Shady eat more than others? What are her favorites? What are my, okay, you guys, I eat so simply that it's not even funny. And some people always ask me, don't you eat any stars? I eat a lot of salads and it could be like the salad that I just made. I eat a lot of salads and I eat a lot of um, like a potato on the side because we'll batch prep and you know, the potatoes on the side. Um, soups right now because the, the weather is, is a lot cooler. So I do, I'm doing a lot of soups. Um, what else do I eat? That's basically it. Soup, salads, potatoes, just simple, simple, simple. I, I don't, I eat really boring. If you go to my Instagram page, you'll see some of the food posts that I, that I make. And I, and sometimes I don't want to post my food because I'm like thinking, oh my God, this is so boring. All it is, is this, uh, you know, potato and a salad or it's squash and a salad or it's a soup and a salad. It's nothing fancy. It's nothing, um, you know, but when company comes over, well, that's another story. Then, then I'll, then I'll make fancier foods and, you know, other foods, but Simplicity is going to win, you guys. Simplicity always, always wins. All right. Variety is the kiss of death for the dieter or the food addict. You know, I, I, I eat so simply that, like you, I eat the same. And when I actually have to make a recipe, I'm like, so hard. You got to like. I know. I, and like, because I don't do a lot of the recipes, it's like, okay, I got to go print them out and, and <laughs> look at how I made them before. Because we, I don't. I don't make them all that often. But the soups and the salads and the potatoes and the squashes, like right now it's squash season. So I love the delcata squash, the acorn squash, the kabocha squash. Those are my go-to foods right now. Not so much potatoes right now as, as it is squash season because those that squash season is going to be gone in a few in a few months. So I got to get it all in as much as I can. I never forget the dinner where you had Hans Deal. You made like, I never saw a spread like that in my life. Do you remember what you made? That was incredible. I, well, I made a lot of Persian food because he wanted, um, he wanted Persian food and it was so funny because I made, I made a lot of Persian food and then I made food. So, because I knew that I was hoping, you know, for Charles and you to like, and then I, I made, I don't remember exactly all that I made, but I know you yelled at me because you were you're like, what is this Thanksgiving? There's so much variety here. It was incredible. What, what was the one that I liked? Was it Tos Kebab? Now, well, you like Tos Kebab, but you also love Torish Kebab. So hard to say, but yes. Well, you call it, you call it Bish Bish. I wonder you going to come out with a SOS free Persian cookbook. That would be like amazing. Well, we're actually, I, I'm, I'm in the process of writing everything and trying to put everything together because I do want to do that. So, um, so it's, it's coming, it's coming. It's just a matter of, of time, but it will what, happen. What do you think you'll call it? I don't know. I'm going to call you and have say, AJ, help me with the title. <laughs> well, that's going to be great because um, I don't think there's one out there. And I don't no, even know if there's a vegan Persian cookbook, even with oil and salt. I haven't seen it, but I definitely, there is a market for it uh, because I get a lot of requests from you guys for Persian recipes and our webinars, um, they are on, on our page and our webinars are still thriving really well with the Persian uh, recipes and all that, which is kind of cool. So, well, I really appreciate what you do. And, you know, what I love about you and Tammy is that you guys are SOS free and you make amazing food. And there's so many people that just think, oh, it's too extreme, but it's just so much easier when you don't eat salt to not overeat. Do you find that as well? I agree with you. Well, I, I, I don't eat any salt. And but sometimes I run into problems because I, you know, I am low on sodium. Um, so you got to watch that, but I, you know, I listened to what Dr. Goldhammer told me and I eat a lot of chard and, um, kale and everything else that has a lot of sodium in it. So that's where we get it. Celery. I do the celery juice every now and then. So I don't, I don't miss the salt. I, I you know, I have salt on the table when the guests come over. Cause I just, I just think if they, you know, they don't eat like me, so they may want the salt, but I find I've noticed lately that even with my guests coming to the house and trying my food, they don't put salt on anything anymore. So that's kind of really nice. That's, that means that the food is flavorful enough and it's good without it. So the salt just kind of sits there. Nobody, nobody's using it. That's great. So yeah. what's, next, what's next for you, Shada? What's next? Well, um, like I said, we are, I am in the process of trying to put recipes together to work on the, uh, on the recipe book. So that will be coming out, God willing, next year. Um, 
I'm still, you know, doing my real estate stuff, which is great because that's that's still one of my passions. I wish I could incorporate the two somehow, but it's just they're both such opposite, you know, opposite things. But I'm managing. I'm doing both, and it's uh, there's going to be more YouTube videos coming out and more stuff coming out for you guys. So yeah, just keep. Uh, Please subscribe to my channel and uh, subscribe to my newsletter and that, that'll keep you updated and posted on everything that's coming out. There is a new webinar coming out for Valentine's Day. It'll be a dessert holiday uh, webinar coming out soon. We just got done filming it. So that's really kind of exciting. And, um, and I'm going to guess that one, at least one of the recipes is going to have pomegranate seeds. How did you know? Well, if, I don't know if you saw the, the latest recipe I just did is that uh, chocolate mousse that I made and it had all the pomegranates and everything in there. OMG. Well, thank you so much. It's great catching up with you. I miss you. I appreciate all you're doing. And guys, go to the show notes. Please sign up for her newsletter and her thank YouTube you. channel. Shada, do you go live at a particular time or is it just... We usually go live on Thursdays. Um, so Thursday has been the, the magic day because that works out for Aaron and myself pretty well. We try to go live every other week um, on Thursdays. And then if we don't go live, then there's uh, videos coming out that will that comes out on a Thursday. So if you subscribe to my email, then you will be notified as to when the uh, the lives are and uh, when the new recipes are coming out. So, yeah. well, we'll we'll miss having you on the Christmas cook along. You did fabulous on the I, Thanksgiving one, but hopefully there'll I'm be sure another holiday. I'm sure you'll do another one. I'm sure you'll do another one. I'd be happy to participate because it really was a fun day. Really and well, was. we we could maybe do one for Valentine's Day or, or Easter or Passover. So we'll see because we had such a great group of chefs. But the two chefs yeah. that got the two chefs that took the spot of you and Tammy were pretty happy they got to do it. So thank well, you I'm so glad. much. I'm yeah. Glad. Thank you. Well, thank you all for having us. Of course. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow at the regular time, 11 a.m. Pacific time. Well, I'll be talking to somebody really amazing. His name is John Badass Vegan, and I'm going to be wearing a special shirt in his honor. Say hi to Mama June, and thank you so I much. I will, honey. Thank you so much. Say hi to Charles and Bailey for me. Love you. Thank I you love you, again. too.